uh, really just through Fernando Magalhães, through Magellan, as I call him, really through an incredible coincidence because I decided to write a book about his first ever circumnavigation. Of course, he is from Sub Rosa, so I began doing research and immersing myself in the Magellan mystique and ethos and uh, became more and more familiar and curious about this part of the world. And uh, that was the beginning of my interest in this uh, part of history. Well, I think uh, by being here, one gets this, a sense of what made Magellan, of breathing the air that he breathed, of uh, uh, looking at the mountains that he looked at, um, seeing the way the earth looked to him, because he was very much a uh, part of the Portuguese uh, mystique and psyche, and uh, brought a particular worldview that was very uniquely Portuguese to his entire voyage and vision. I don't think it was an accident that the first ever circumnavigator of the world was Portuguese. Um, and I think there's a part of that uh, hardihood, that pioneering spirit, um, and a sense of persevering against all obstacles that seems to me to be distinctively Portuguese, that Magellan really incarnates. Well, I think potentially the Magellan story is, uh, is a bigger film, and um, I think that uh, there's a brilliant producer who wants to make it into a movie and sees the dramatic potential, the, the larger-than-life potential, and also the magical uh, potential for it. Um, because Magellan was seeing parts of the world that were so new to European eyes that they did have a kind of magical quality, even though they were concrete reality. And so everything seemed larger than life because they were seeing people and places and phenomena for the very first time. And I think that uh, the movie uh, that's being developed comprehends what makes it special, what gives it an extra uh, fourth dimension, if you will, uh, that a more um, traditional account might miss.